Hello and welcome to another model building workshop. I am Mr. Allen coming to you on behalf of the Community Libraries of Providence uh, from, from my basement workshop here in Providence, Rhode Island. So today we're looking at the uh, M4A3 Sherman. And uh, I got two of them here and they're both the uh, Tamiya kits. So here's one here. And you're going to notice on this one that this has the uh, dry storage for the shells in it. And they added these armored plates. They welded these armored plates onto the sides of the tanks in an attempt to add more armor protection for the ammunition that's stored inside. Uh, the Sherman had this horrible tendency um, to explode when it was hit because the ammunition would ignite and uh, kaboom. Now I'm still working on these as you can see. <laughs> so bear with me a bit. And I've been working with different crew people. I've got a, you know, a set from Tamiya and from Dragon. Right there is a Dragon figure that I put in this one. I'm still kind of playing around with, with what I want to do as far as, you know, what's going to be stowed on the tank, what kind of crew is going to be here. Still playing around with that. So, and again, these are the uh, Tamiya kits. There's another one here. This one's from the, uh, I think the 6th Armored Division for Battle of the Bulge, what this one is. I used some uh, AFV tracks on this one because I wanted to have the grousers on it. So that's what I opted for here. And that's this version. And you'll see I got some crew work in here. Let's have a look at the instruction sheet for these guys. Oh, and this one has the uh, the extended duckbill tracks for bad weather. If you can see that, they've got the extensions on this one. So the instruction book is typical with your story and history of the tank here. So it says the M4A3 version was first put into production in late 1942 by the Ford Motor Company in a production run of 1,690 of them were completed in September 1943. Yeah, and it talks about the dry ammunition storage and then the wet storage, which is what the other one here would have, because it doesn't have the uh, the added armor plates on the side. That means that the ammunition was stored with some... Uh, so it explains it here. It's called a wet storage system so that they wouldn't ignite, basically, <laughs> when the shells got you know, hit by an incoming round, so it wouldn't cook off as easily. Yes, there's a whole lot to this story. It talks about all kinds of things about it. Well, let's have a look at the instructions. Typical Tamiya map unfolding style of instructions. But you've got the suspension, which is not terribly difficult with the vertical volute. I believe that's what it's called. Vertical volute spring suspension, yes. That's what these are. Sorry. <laughs> you can see that it's not terrible to put this together. You know, of course not. It's a Tamiya kit. They usually go together quite well. But you get a lot of options for adding different types of storage to it. There's also options here for... And I'll show you on the kits here. But what kind of a turret hatch you want. Because an early and a late version. The later version is just a uh, one piece rounded hatch like that. As you can see. 
and the earlier one here, which has the two doors, a turret roof for that style instead of the one one door, one hatch. Again, these have rubber band style tracks. The AFE Club type of track is, is a glueable vinyl, which is what's on this one. That's with the kit tracks here with the with the web uh, what do they call that? <laughs> the extended tracks. Duckbills. <laughs> they refer to them as duckbills that they stuck on the tracks to kind of sort of widen them for uh, rougher terrain. And finally it talks about tread placement and your painting options. Well, there's a lot of different things you can do with painting Shermans, really. But what they show you here on this instruction sheet is, you know, a whitewashed one and a few overall olive drab versions. And one of these, this fun cartoon with a wolf head on it, the bottom is from the uh, Philippines campaign in the Pacific. So you get a few interesting options for markings with this kit. Uh, this was a different boxing, so it had different types of uh, markings in that in that kit. So slightly different, not by much though, really. Just and this one I did a little bit of artistic liberty when looking at photos of Shermans in Germany. This has got the black. Overspray, which was common in like the last few months of the war when they get into Germany, that the black overspray showed up. And in some cases, they would have removed the stars because they make great aiming points for that kind of vary from unit to unit. So, yeah, I recommend these kits because as I've mentioned in many episodes Tamiya or Tamiya whatever however you pronounce it makes really good easy to assemble models and these are no exception to that rule at all and what's the fun with these is they give you a lot of gear so you can add a lot of stuff on the back like jerry cans and tarps and all kinds of different things so I'm still playing around with that in my head as to how I want to gear this thing up. This is with the 6th Armored Division during the Battle of the Bulge. And this one, I think I left this as a generic. Yeah, I left this one generic without any markings, just for a standard Sherman that would have been in Germany in the final months of the war. So, But there's a lot of different ways you can paint Shermans. I mean, they don't all have to be overall olive drab. You know, because like the overspray of uh, black and then the whitewash are two uh, options you can do. Granted, these are M4A3, so they're kind of later in the war. Uh, earlier versions of the Shermans had other interesting paint schemes, and some at Normandy were, you know, had some brown on them. And ones in Italy had all kinds of things going on in that theater. So, anyway. Just a quick look at a couple of Shermans, and uh, keep on modeling out there, huh? Keep on building. Don't think I need to say much more about the Sherman. I think everybody probably knows a lot about the history of these things. The main tank of the United States during World War II. And that's the M4A3 Sherman. Okay, we'll see you guys next time on the Model Building Workshop.